Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this vlog. Uh -huh. This is um, going to be about shuffles, table shuffles, uh, predominantly table, well, it's going to be about table shuffles. Reason being is there's lots of material um, on overhand shuffles, and there's lots of videos and things about where you can you can see all this done. Uh, but I mean overhand shuffle, I'm talking about this kind of shuffle. So I'm going to concentrate really on table shuffles. There is a lot of information out there on video about the Zaro shuffle. Uh, Gary Plants has his way of doing it. Steve Reynolds has uh, his thoughts on it. And also there's the original Zaro uh, tape as well, or video, or maybe a download nowadays. So please like and subscribe this. Um, this kind of material that I'm going to show you here may be probably discussed at uh, my lecture at the weekend. If you're interested in this kind of thing or the lecture, uh, please visit my website, eddiemccall.co.uk. And uh, hopefully I'll see everyone at the weekend for the lecture. So shuffles on the table. Um, really shuffling like this is a very deceptive thing to do if you can do it. Um, so it's merely just splitting the deck and shuffling. Now what I want to really talk about is making the kind of shuffles look the same uh, as much as you can. Sometimes it's impossible to make them like, identical, but if you can make them sort of look very, very similar, that's always a great thing. So one of the shuffles that I, I like and I use all the time and I use it in routines all the time, is this shuffle. This is a table shuffle, but this shuffle is false, okay? So when it's false, when I cut the cards like this, you'll notice that I look down and then I look up. Uh, when I look down, the people will look down sometimes, but when I look up, I'm lifting their attention up away from uh, when. So I'm looking down at the shuffle, I'm looking up as I square up. Okay, now I can take the deck and I know I, and I touched on this the last time, you can place the deck aside, it looks fine. Then when you come back, you can look down and you can cut the cards. And then I look up again as I finish the cut. So this is all part of the misdirection of the shuffle. Um, but this is a totally false um, shuffle, this. Okay. And uh, just to demonstrate that, there's the cards face up. So this half's face up, this half's face down. And we can still do the shuffle. So if I do the shuffle this way, we push these in, we cut the cards, and you can see there's all the face up, and these are all face down. It's a totally false shuffle, and face down, this is how it looks again. So the cards are shuffled, we push them in, we square the cards. Now you can delay this, as I said, by uh, placing the cards aside uh, before you strip them, before you cut them. So this can look very like you place the cards aside, chat for a while, which breaks everything up. Um, which is a good thing to do, I think, for shuffles and cuts, and then you just cut them. Okay. Now you can go into all of these kind of things, but I'm not really into all of that. I prefer to keep things as they are. A cut is a cut for me. So either maybe this kind of thing, and that would be your cut sequence. You don't have to do that because you're going to, you're cutting forward anyway. So you're cutting at this point. That's a straight cut. There's a little fly here. Sorry. Okay. So you don't really need to go further than that, doing up the ladder and things. So if you prefer push through shuffles, this is generally called a strip out or a pull out shuffle. And if you prefer push through shuffles, this is the push through that I kind of generally like. Now, if you watch this, this is the same motions are the same as the strip out. Okay, so you push in, you push square, and you cut forward. Okay, so like those are push throughs and strip out. This is a push through. Okay, so you take the cards, you shuffle these in, you push these in, and now you cut with the right hand instead of the left hand. It's the only difference, really. They look very similar um, in movement and everything else. 
and that's why I keep those two shuffles. I use these shuffles all the time um, because they just look very, very similar. It's really down to you how what you want to do with these kind of things. I use them all the time and hopefully a lot of this will, as I said, be discussed in the lecture. Um, I just thought I would demonstrate a couple of shuffles for you. You can see how closely they look together. They, they're pretty good shuffles. Um, so it's trying to keep things looking generally the same if you can. Um, that's the kind of goal. Um, you don't want to over egg everything and making two things too busy. So a simple shuffle, like that. see, it's a simple shuffle. Why do you have to do anything else? Now you can take your hands off the deck. Now you can square the cards and now you can cut them. Um, so why do you have to run into all these other fancy strip cuts and everything else? Kind of mentioned this before, but I just thought I would pay particular attention to the shuffles. As I said, this is a push through here and this is a strip out, so they look um, virtually the same, it's just different hands that are doing the cutting. Okay, uh, if you're interested in any of this, as I said, let me know, we can um, discuss some of this at the weekend at the live lecture. Uh, I hope you attend, I hope you like this kind of thing, if you do, as I said, visit my website eddiemccall.co.uk and uh, you'll find lots of material on there to do with shuffles and table work and, uh, and other things. So. Uh, hopefully see you at the weekend for the lecture. Uh, if not, please like and subscribe uh, again. I think I said that. And I'll see you again in another uh, vlog. The next vlog, I'm probably going to be talking a little bit about Roy Walton. And um, we'll probably be performing one of his effects. Um, that I think is probably the best way to do that effect when I get there. Okay, so hopefully see you in the next vlog or see you at the lecture. Thank you for your time. Bye.